was a there was this very strong resistant movement in Portugal against the policy of the Troika. Twice there were nearly a million people on the streets, around 10% of the population. Transferred to Germany, that would have meant 8 million citizens That's from right. the streets. Uh, and probably in Germany this would have led to a fundamental political change. Uh, but here the government and the Troika proceeded as if nothing had happened. Uh, can you explain why? Well, indeed, there were some changes because the first large demonstration was ignited by a decision of a transfer of the equivalent of one month wage from the, the workers to the bosses, yeah. a direct uh, transfer. And uh, that was prevented by the very large uh, popular movement. But the fact was that this, this sort of mass movement was not rooted in a more permanent uh, opposition. And the most important political party outside the government, the Socialist Party, had signed the memorandum of the Troika, so it was uh, compromised with the Troika itself. And uh, so the, the large part of the, of the parliament uh, was not opposed to the, to the solutions of the Troika, and indeed it favored this sort of alternative. So there was a lack of political alternative, and there was a lack of a continuity of uh, the mass movement itself. Mm -hmm. And from the very beginning, the, the, the Troika's institutions as a condition for the negotiation they required that both big parties yes. were part of the negotiation what did this signal to the population democracy not wanted or well um, in 2011 um, I, and I was wrong on that because I felt that there would be a large opposition to this sort of agreement because of external interference because of the the concrete pr perspective to, to the Portuguese economy. But indeed what happened was that the large majority of the population was so afraid of losing wages and, and pensions that it accepted uh, the, the intervention of the Troika as uh, a viable alternative. Now it turns out that uh, indeed the wages and pensions were in danger because of the Troika and not uh, protected by the Troika. And, uh, for the last years, what happened was uh, cuts in, in the social security system and in the, the revenues of, of, the, of the workers. Mm. In the, uh, and what does all this mean for the democracy in, in Portugal? How, how have the democratic procedures, institutions been affected? Well, uh, the, troik the memorandum with the Troika was never voted as such in the parliament, unlike what happened in Greece, as far as I know, but uh, the concrete steps were decided in each of the laws of, uh, for the next year's budget. Um, so uh, the biggest danger for democracy was not only instantaneous, be because it, it, it implied uh, gigantic transfer of wealth from workers and, and the, mm -hmm. the poor population to, to, to the riches, to the banks and to the international funds, to the, to the financial system. But it's the most important democratic danger comes afterwards. It's saying that it will take until 2045 the control of the Portuguese budget in order to pay uh, for the, the financial rent which was achieved by the, uh, the bailout and all the, the, the arrangements organized by the Troika. So it means for a whole generation, impoverishment is the only alternative and unemployment or precarious employment mm -hmm. is the only alternative. And it, this really means that a democratic system which takes everything from the citizens and does not allow them to decide on what to do on, with what they produce, that's not a democratic system, that's an authori authoritarian system. So that's the biggest danger nowadays. Mm -hmm. But the ministers of the current government of the centre-right parties, PSD mm -hmm. and CDS, they have always said they fully agree with the programme yeah. of austerity and privatisation yeah. and wage cuts demanded by the Troika. So they do only execute what they wanted to do anyway. And yeah. the creditor countries are not to blame, or are they? Well, in a sense, everything is to blame because it's, it's a, an economic and financial system which is very coherent, 
when uh, French or German or British banks are protected in the bailout of yeah. Portugal or other countries, of course they take a profit uh, from uh, the conditions of, of this uh, new system. When uh, new funds uh, uh, lend money in a high interest rate, they take a profit from it. And when uh, taxes are raised or wages are lowered because of the payment of the financial rent, well, they, they benefit from it. But of course, for ideological and political and social reasons, the parties of the government wanted this program as, as well. So they, they are not uh, blameless. Well, they wanted really this yeah. sort of, of uh, rearrangement of the, the structure of uh, the Portuguese society because they believe, as so many economists believe, that if there is a, uh, an economic crisis, wages must be lowered. Yeah. then the solution is to take more from working people than uh, from the financial system, which gains much more. And they seize the opportunity to, to lend more legitimation for this kind of program yeah. from the Troika? Yes, well, you know, if any, par any political party would stand in an election with the saying that we will raise uh, the, the taxes and we will take your pensions, or your, your father's pensions yeah. and your wages, it will not, would not gain. But using the pretext of the external pressure, they could develop uh, the ideological program, which is to rearrange all the social structure in Portugal. You see, we, when the financial crisis began, almost half of the Portuguese workers were under a signed uh, collective contract. Yeah. Now, less than 6% of those workers have a, a social contract. They have only individual contracts. So they are totally vulnerable to all pressure so and to distinctions of wages and so The system of on. collective bargaining has That's been right. dismantled? Totally, totally. From half to less than one twentieth uh, in, 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 in the, the whole society. And this has been engineered in only two and a half years? No, no, no. Since the beginning of the international financial crisis mm -hmm. in 2008. Yeah. But of course the large push was with the Troika. Because uh, the legal uh, conditions of, of bargaining change and the pressure of the bosses was so, so important. So it's... Uh, and that's, that's a social purpose. It's, it has an objective, which is to change the conditions of the reorganization, the, the organization of, of, the, of the social structure, of the distribution of wealth. And but this is much more than only economic reform. Of course. This is another social model. You that's, make, right. Another, that's right. Another form to organize the, Absolutely. the society. Absolutely. That's, the, that's the, the, the case, yeah. But has this been done on purpose? Of deliberately? Course. Of course. Uh, it's difficult to imagine that unknown technocrats from the Commission or the IMF execute such an ideological uh, undertaking. No. no, it's not so difficult. If you read the papers from the IMF and the guidelines from OECD or the European Commission you, or the, the European Central Bank, which is the, one of the Taliban's of the, this sort of ultra-liberal uh, approach, you see that the idea that there is the, the what they call the labor market, as yeah. if labor was a market or as, as if a man or a woman is a good. Yeah. Well, but the labor market should be liberal, totally liberalized in the sense that there should, no, uh, should be no collective bargaining because that would tend to give to the workers more power because they are together. And if otherwise, the social structure imposes a differentiation of wages and of contracts and of uh, um, the tenure in the working place, well, that's, that's paradise. That's mm. paradise for, for the liberal management of the production. So you, you have only the part of authority and you don't have the part of democracy or of uh, challenging rules and negotiating new rules. But this sounds as if... Mm, the whole adjustment program was sort of a joint venture of Portugal's market, market radical elites uh, with the creditors, countries, institutions in order to enrich domestic and foreign investors? 
Well, I would say a little more. Not in this, a joint venture, yes, because there's a common social interest, which is rule organized by, by finance, mostly by the financial system, which takes the rents from the highways, mm -hmm. the contracts for the highways for 30 years, for the contracts for um, external lending for until 2046. You see, uh, when, there is, uh, when a country is sub uh, submitted to this sort of uh, long-term perspective of conditions and of the imposition of, of this sort of rules, um, it's wonderful to get money in that sense, uh, because you just sit there and wait uh, for the taxes to pay for a rent which was arranged in a, a situation of enormous difficulty and enormous crisis, which was, by the way, provoked by the financial system itself, because it began with the Lehman Brothers and all what you know with uh, the European banks and, uh, and the, the US banks. But if you're right, it would mean that Portugal now lives in a condition of uh, sort of an economic colonialism. Well, uh, it's different from colonialism, but in a sense it's a protectorate because uh, there is not a, democ a full democracy in the sense that electing a government, the Portuguese citizens can empower a government in order to decide um, according to well, the different political uh, rules, but to decide on what kind of taxes, what kind of investment, what kind of savings, what kind of uh, social and economic agenda for the develop development of a country. That's out of the question. So now the, 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 the type of control the European institutions impose, well, the IMF, but uh, for a longer term is much more important the weight of the European institutions. This, they, they impose uh, um, a political rule which uh, uh, lessens democracy in that sense. Yes, it's a protectorate. The interesting aspect in this is the EU Commission, by the European Treaty, is not allowed to intervene in the setting of wages. No. There is a special article in the treaty saying that the Commission has no competence in wage setting. Absolutely. But when the same officials of the same commission are member of the Troika here in Portugal or in the other crisis countries, they do exactly this. Absolutely. That, because the Troika why, why, allowed... Why, why this is not legally challenged? Well, uh, well indeed, uh, the budget treaty or um, many measures by the Troika were legally challenged. On the, uh, in, on the Portugal level. In the, at the yeah. Portugal well, level. But on the yeah. European level. Because there is no uh, European institution which can uh, um, protect the rights of, uh, of the citizens. The parliament could try. No, well, the parliament is powerless. We have uh, an, an extraordinary institution based on the oldest traditions of um, democracy and the division of powers, which is the basis for your, your political rule, in which you have a parliament which has no full capacity of legal initiative in Europe and that capacity is in the, at the hands of the government itself which is the European Commission or the European mm -hmm. Council and uh, governments inside the European Council have more power than in their own countries because there they are submitted to a parliament but not in, in at the European level mm -hmm. and the European laws and decisions can be imposed on European on, on the national parliaments. So all this construct is totally absurd from the democratic point of view. It's created to impose the sort of ruling you mentioned. Yeah. Recently you and 73 other prominent intellectuals, artists, former politicians from all parts and currents of the Portuguese society signed a manifesto which demands a debt relief, a debt restructuring for Portugal. What would that mean in practice, if it would be done? Well, uh, it depends on the negotiation, because it should be negotiated with the creditors and with the European institutions, of course. But that would mean that uh, the payment of interests, which represents every year now and much more in the future, the equivalent of all what is spent in the national health system, would be diminished. Mm -hmm in order to get some money for investment and job creation. So we would push the economy with a perspective of recovery and not with the, the, the perspective of decay, 
of investment and employment and the, the quality of, of the social uh, services and, and public structure. So that would mean a radical change in the management of society against austerity and in favor of promoting some sort of, of uh, growth, uh, qualified growth and uh, wise growth. That's why so many people signed it, including some ex-ministers uh, mi uh, ministers of finance of right-wing governments yeah. and, uh, and so many different people. And, uh, well, uh, it's, a, it's a prudent, uh, a wise decision to do that. We need that, otherwise, you see, when you have interest rates on, on the stock of, of debt, which are of 5 or 7 percent, and uh, the measures to pay that debt imply austerity and recession, so the, the reduction of the GDP, the uh, snowball effect yeah. between the increase of the payment of interests and the decrease of the GDP uh, is so large that the debt will be increased year after year. And that's the case of Portugal. The more we pay, the more we owe, because the debt is always increasing and the measures to pay it are destroying the country. So sounds it's a problem. Pl sounds plausible. What was the reaction of the EU Commission or the IMF or the other Euro countries? Well, surprisingly, the European Commission had uh, his spokesperson uh, making a press conference against this sort of call, saying that it was unacceptable. Even the IMF uh, took a stance on, on it, not acceptable. Um, but gladly for us, uh, well, s many editors of the most prominent uh, uh, scientific journals, uh, Joseph Stiglitz, Nobel Prize of Economics, and so many different people uh, supported it. So there is a split. The institutions oppose because they want everything to stay as it stands. Mm -hmm. But so many economists and so many different people from, from different opinions said, well, it's uh, the good way to go. We cannot prevent it, it's needed. But there is a big but. Your proposal, your demand implies that German or French or Dutch taxpayers will lose a lot of money because at least in part of the emergency loans given to Portugal need to be written off. Well, you know, there's a myth on that. Well, first, I, I understand that uh, if I were a, a German taxpayer, I would be asking some questions. Well, the first question I would ask is, what did I pay for Greece and for Portugal? And the real answer is, I paid nothing. So far? So far. Nothing so far. So far we have only lent. Well, but, no. Asian funds have lent to the European funds, and the European funds take a commission on it. So, for German institu financial institutions and others supporting the operation, there is a commission to, to be, uh, they get, so they get profit from the payments on that. So, so far so good, yeah. they are getting money. If there's a restructuring of the debt, uh, the ECB would lose, not necessarily the German banks. Well, they have a very low stake in the Portuguese no, but, debt. But, but the German sovereign? The, the German, German sovereign the, the would German, lose... The German state. The German state coffers would, would lose an asset. Only if uh, there is a need to recapitalize the ECB. That no, would no, be no. the only case. No, not the ECB. But <coughs> from, the, from the European stability mechanism. Yeah. They have raised money on the market and then lent it to the crisis countries. So if they have to write off then the European stability mechanism will run a loss and this loss oh. has to be covered. Well, yes, but the loss is considering that the interest rate is very high. If the restructuring of the debt, as we propose, is not a pardon of the debt, so there is no write-off of the stock of yeah. capital, we, what we propose, and we are making all uh, a concrete detailed plan on that, would be to replace the debt for a lower interest rate for a longer period. So there is no write-off of the debt, but the gains from the high interest rates mm -hmm. would be 
but haven't, less. haven't the interest rates not already been lowered to nearly two point? No, they are at three point five or four percent to an economy which had a loss of two percent of the GDP because of the same measures last year. Yeah. So the the difference because beca between what is paid and what is imposed on the economy is so large that it's unpayable. So really, the difference is should the German state or other states accept a lower gain a lower return, but still, yeah. a, still a return or no payment at all because if a country goes bankrupt it mm -hmm. will pay nothing mm -hmm. that what will happen if the interest if, if the, the burden of the debt is such that uh, payments are seized so I think that balancing all the, the, the positions it would be much better for Europe to have a negotiation of uh, a new conditions for the debt, which are acceptable for everyone. And if this debt restructuring will not be granted, what will happen in Portugal? If uh, there is no debt restructuring, I think that uh, the country will uh, turn towards uh, uh, exiting the Eurozone. Really? Because there will be no other alternative possible. That's the last of the possible solutions. And the last time we met, you talked about a demographic tragedy also. Well, if you, if you consider that the acceptance of this sort of alternatives for 20 years' time, um, the unemployment is so large that we, it will pressure a large and enormous immigration, which is going on for three years now. Um, you see, um, well, the Portuguese working force is some five million and a half. It's a small country. Um, but um, in the last three years, between 300,000 people or four and to 400,000 people um, leave, uh, left Portugal. And that's mostly qualified workers, engineers, nurses, and so on, because they don't, don't find jobs. So if it goes on at this rate, in one more year or two more years, we will have 10% of the working force, mostly the most qualified, out of the country. Yes. And that's a demogra demographic tragedy. And if it goes on for several years, then the projections of the National Institute of Statistics is that Portugal would go back to 6 million. From, so 10, from million. 10 million to, to 6 million. That would mean uh, the average population of the, big, the, the end of the 19th century. And that would mean that Portugal would not be an economic, uh, a viable economy or a viable society, because that's, the, that's more than the losses of a war imposed on a country. So you see, that's the, the deepest democratic problem. People must be able to live together, to, to trust uh, his, his own country, to trust Europe and to trust uh, each other's capacity of dialogue and uh, getting solutions. If we look to, to Europe and the only solution is impoverish and um, destroy the employments for your youngers and uh, take the pensions of your fathers, well, the capacity of uh, acceptance is uh, nil. I hope we will do other. <laughs> Thank you very okay. much. Thanks <laughs> Thank a you. lot.